Welcome to our study on the book of Romans. This is the Sonship Review Part 8, and this is session 66. Now, in our previous session, by the way, the notes that got handed out today, you should have them in front of you, are going to take up uh, where we left off. Even though we didn't finish the notes last time, these are going to take up where we left off. Secondly, that note taker that you have, throw away the old note taker that you got last week. The one today replaces it. Because that note taker, I thought we would get further than we were going to get. I, I wound up reworking that note taker so that you know, this information we're actually covering. So we don't have to wait, keep postponing it to go through it. So you should have two things there. You should have a set of notes, and then you should have a new note taker. That takes the place of the one that we handed you last week. Okay, uh, <clears throat> with that being said, last week we were looking at the olive trees, the good olive tree and the wild olive tree. Um, that, I don't want to rehearse everything that we did last week, but I have to tell you, when we went through this the first time, I don't know what year it was. It must have been when you were here last, right? What was that? What did we dis discover? Two and a half, two, 2015? We were going through this section, and because I knew we already understood about the dispensational change, we didn't spend very many lessons in this. This time, we're really going through it uh, because there are people following us that don't know everything that this group knows. So we're trying to make sure that we get all the details in. So I'm glad that we're doing that this time. But we're also going to answer some of those questions because there were questions back then about this tree. So I want to settle those issues once and for all. Now, we're going to go through this passage together. But in order to do this, let me make sure that we understand. So the first thing is, <clears throat> there's a context to what we're about to look at. And of course, this is being written to the church at Rome. Yes, it, it, in Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul is explaining a lot about what has happened to Israel and why. But when you get into chapter 11 and you get to verse 13, he makes this statement. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So in verse 13, I'm saying this is very important to get. We, and we didn't really emphasize this when we went th back through this a couple of years ago. But when he says, <clears throat> for I speak to you Gentiles, the church at Rome has Gentiles for sure. So, but he's not just saying that. What he's saying is what I'm about to talk to you about now is for the, the audience of all the Gentiles in the world, not just saved Gentiles, not just the church at Rome, not just members of the body of Christ, but for every Gentile. Otherwise, there would be no reason to have verse 13 in there, for I speak to you Gentiles, even speaking to Gentiles since chapter 1, verse 1. But he had been speaking to saved Gentiles written specifically to the church at Rome, and now we know applicable doctrine for the body of Christ, right? Okay, so when we get to verse 13, <clears throat> that sets a new audience, so to speak. He's not just talking to saved people. And that's going to be important because when we get down to verses 16 and go down to verse 24, he's going to say some things that if you think He's only talking to save Gentiles. You might get the impression that somebody is losing their salvation. He's talking to a group of Gentiles just in general. He's not singling out saved people. He's just talking to Gentiles in general. And he's going to give them some warnings about <clears throat> things that are happening. And, and, and for them to take heed and some things like that. All right. So, <clears throat> let's just read the passage and take a look at everything that we're going to be discussing here. So, let's just read through it, starting in verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, 
And thou, being a wild olive branch, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, no, long passage. A lot of stuff in there. So, <clears throat> I want to remind us of one of the points that I made last week, because this is important. I'm kind of listing this up here, and that is the fact that this is an olive tree. Remember we talked about there are places in the Scripture where the olive tree, the fig tree, and the vine tree have an application to some aspect of Israel. But in this particular case, just like the one I showed you last week in Matthew and in Luke, the type of tree that's being listed here is not the issue. He's saying an olive tree, but he could have said another tree. And, and why? Because the whole issue here, just wait, wait, if you're talking about the tree, <clears throat> what's he doing with the tree? It is an example. And what's he doing with the tree? He's, he's broke off some branches, and then what's he doing? Grafting. He's grafting some branches into that tree. Is the olive tree the only tree that you can do that with? No, because that's, that's the example. That's the focus. The focus is not what kind of tree is it. Because the only thing that's being taught to you here is... There were some branches that were in the tree naturally. They got broken off. Some other branches got grafted in. And then there's going to come a time when some of those branches are going to get broken off and the natural branches are going to get grafted back in. <clears throat> the, the issue now is not about is the tree Israel. In fact, today we'll come to the conclusion of this. The tree is not Israel. And the fact that it's an olive tree is not the issue. Now, we're going we're gonna to do this today. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I mentioned it last week, but we're going to do it again today. <clears throat> there are... Well, I'll just wait till we get to it. There's no reason for me to jump ahead and do that. There's two kinds of, tree, two kinds of olive trees here. One of them is the good olive tree. Somebody tell me, what is the difference between the good olive tree... It's cultivated, and wh which means what? Care yes, yeah, taken care of. It, get, it gets attention, it gets care. And then you have the wild olive tree. Now look, <clears throat> somewhere in here, I have this, so let me just see where we're going next. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of want to just talk to you about this, but if I do that, I'm going to abandon the notes. And if I do that, we're going to lose the references. So let me just stick with how I plan to do it. And if it looks like I just can't, I'll just stop and do, we'll just talk about it. But <clears throat> the unbelieving part of the tree, let, let's, well, let's just look back. I'm sorry. Because Audie came up, and we were talking about this just for a few seconds before, the, before it started here. Take a look back here. Uh, back up one more. Um, verse 17. 
it, and if some of the branches be broken off, not all of the branches, but some of the branches. And then we know from verse 20 why the branches were broken off. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. So who are the branches that get broken off? Are you scared to say? Unbelieving Israel. I know what you're saying. What you just got to say in the tree is not Israel. The tree is not Israel. The branches are in this tree. The branches are Israel. Now you're saying, well, how can the branch be Israel and the tree is not Israel? Because the whole point is not about the tree, not about what kind of tree this is. The whole point here is about what he's illustrating what God is doing with Israel. They were a cultivated tree. They were cared for. They had access to God. And, 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 they, were, and they were being looked after. But when they fell, all of that changed. And, 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 and then God began to be good to Gentiles. And when he started being good to Gentiles, the only way for God to do that is to, because of what kind of tree this is, is to graft them into this tree. Because if they're not in this tree, they can't get that special care and, 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 and looking after that we're getting today in the dispensation of grace. <clears throat> Why am I looking at you today and, and thinking, this is just... I don't know, is it just me? Is this making sense so far? Oh, okay, okay, well then I'm going to ignore all what I'm thinking. Okay. So how long did God cultivate Israel? How long did he care for Israel? Well, i got a couple things in your notes here. Abraham, I'm counting from the, from the time God calls Abraham. I know the nation isn't there yet. But you know what God's already doing? He's laying the groundwork. You know what? It's just like before you plant, what do you do? You prepare the ground and you do all that. Well, look, that, I, I count that from Abraham. And so Abraham enters Canaan 1921 years before Christ. So that's the start. And it's going to run. Now look. Here, when you get to Jesus, when you get to Christ, well, then you already know that's been 1,921 years. And then you've got, well, you know what? I put the cross up there. The before Christ is actually the birth. When you get to the cross, you've had 33 and a half years, right? And then you've got, what, another year extension of mercy, right? So, no, so what you have when you total all of that up is you have almost 2,000 years of Israel being in the good olive tree. They've been cared for and cultivated. So... How long has God been doing that with them? For almost two millennia. All right. Um, let me ask you a question. Were there any unbelieving Israelites that lived during that time? <laughs> I would say there was a plethora of, of unbelieving Israelites. And let me ask you a question. Did God break them off? back there. I mean, did God break all those branches off back there? He didn't do that until when? He didn't do that until after this extension of mercy. That's when He broke off the branches. The program is allowed to continue, right? Israel, are they God's, are they God's people through here? They are. They are. Are they disobedient? Yes. Are they rebellious? Yes. Are they under the curses? Yes. But they're still not on the level of the Gentiles. So when, that, when this time comes around and the extension of mercy is over, and I'm going to show you this in the verses in a moment, 
they're, they're go and so, well, look, let me just see. This is verse 20 that we're looking at here. He says, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and they were, and thou standest by faith. Now, that phrase is a phrase we're going to have to look at today. What does that mean? And thou standest by faith. Because the common way of looking at that is to say that, okay, well, we're, the, our standing is because of our faith, our standing in Christ. But wait a minute, who's he talking to? No, no. Remember verse 13. He's, For I say to you, Gentiles. Remember we went back and looked at that? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. What Gentiles is he talking to? All of them in general. So are they all saved? No. So if he's saying, look, they got broken off because of unbelief, but you stand by faith, if you're saying it's their faith that gave them a standing in Christ, then all of a sudden, guess what? Then every Gentile must be saved. They're not. Am I, am I making this confusing? Okay, you're shaking your heads, but, and, but I'm, I'm seeing your eyes are going like, man. If he's talking to every Gentile, he's not going to be talking to them in terms of their salvation. Why? Because they're not all saved. Does that make sense? Okay. If they're not saved, then that's standing, but thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. And we're going to talk about these so that we can clarify these out. But those branches, the ones that were already there, they got broken off. And then we find out that the branches that get grafted in, they're going to be broken off. All right, so let me take you. Can I... Can we abandon the notes and let me just talk about it? I think that'll be easier for me. And, and then if we have to go back and look at a verse, we'll, we'll just do that. But look, in this passage, and I think this will be a good, a good way to do this. In this passage, and let's start right here in verse 17. If some of the branches be broken off, who are the some that were broken off? You already know this. Unsaved Israel. Why aren't saved Israel branches broken off yeah yep they're in there that's right because look if you're if there's two there's there's two groups in Israel I'm gonna have to really work to salvage this session aren't I I can tell you have two groups in Israel you have unbelieving Israel and you have believing Israel unbelieving Israel that's what we often refer to as the apostate element in the nation. This is what we call the little flock or the believing remnant, right? How much of it how much of Israel has God been working with up to this point? In other words, when Jesus came, how much of Israel did Jesus come for? All of it. And and because God is working with them, because he's working with them, and he's trying to get them to, a, to, to salvation, trying to get them there. <clears throat> he's working with, with all. Now, some get saved. But when God says, and by the way, I'll tell you when he broke these off. Can, let, me, let me just read on down. Uh, <clears throat> look at verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity. Wait a minute. Who fell? That's right. And when did they fall? Remember four terms earlier in the passage. The stumbling, the fall, the diminishing, and the fullness. When did Israel fall? Right there at the end of the extension of mercy. Right? They rejected. This is the stone which the builders rejected. Now, God says, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. And so they stumbled at that stone. And what does Paul say? They stumbled and they 
fell. And because they fell, now, now, look back at this now here. He says, on them which fell, severity. In other words, God's no longer treating them the way he was treating them before. What were they before? I mean, before, when they were, when God was, when God was dealing with them the way he was dealing with them, God just kept giving them chances, didn't he? I mean, even, I mean, think about it. They crucify their Messiah, they get another chance. All of a sudden now, they fall. Now we know they fell. We know God interrupted the program. But when those branches that were unbelieving got broken off, you know what happened? They got broken off of the tree. What kind of olive tree was it? It was a good olive tree. And what was the good olive tree? It was the cultivated, cared for tree of God's attention and, and, and access to him. When unbelieving Israel, uh, when, they, when those branches were broken off, they no longer occupied the position with God that they had before. During this dispensation of grace, is Israel God's favored nation? The answer is no. There is no favored nation now. God's not dealing with anyone that way. Israel fell. And where did they fall to? I know you say, well, when you fall, you hit the ground. But if Israel fell, huh? That's right. They fell to the same level as us Gentiles. So God's not dealing with them any better than he is with us. Is that not true? In fact, let me ask you, who really believes the gospel during this dispensation of grace? Jews or Gentiles? That's Gentiles. That's why it's called a dispensation of Gentile grace. Is it possible for a Jew to be saved today? It is. But you know what? He has some hang-ups. And even though there are some that get saved, most of them do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They do not. They reject that. And because they rejected it back there, when God cut off the program, then He says... I'm no longer going to deal with you guys. And this is, by the way, let me just read through this and give you a preview here. It's, um, let me see where this starts. Uh, look in verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, the, the thou is who? Us Gentiles, right? And thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. What comes into your mind when you get the fatness of the olive tree? What's he talking about? Uh, say it, Ruby. For, okay, what did, you, what did you say? The food. Okay, don't you, don't you think of the fatness of being all of the... Oh, yeah, the good stuff, right? Thank you. That's exactly what I was after. Isn't it? I know that's not a technical theological term, good stuff. But it's perfect for this. Because that's exactly what it's going to be called. Because the root, by the way, if the branches get anything, where does all that nutrition come from? The root. So he says from the and, and so you Gentiles now, because you got plugged into this tree, you get to partake of the root, everything the root can supply, and the fatness of, all, let's use Ruby's term. This is great. The good stuff that you're going to get from the tree. Now, let's keep reading it here. And he talks about boast not against the branches. Let's see. And then I need to get to um, verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. He said there's, well, there's two ways to be treated here. If you're in the tree, you get what? Goodness. But if you get broken off of the tree, you're getting what? Severity. See, this is not rocket science, is it? It's just hard because I teach it the way I do. Okay, so trying to recover from that. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity. But toward thee, you Gentiles, 
Good stuff. Isn't, isn't that right? Goodness. And, and, and now we'll talk about the rest of that verse later. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. This tree, folks, it is not about the tree being Israel, and it can't be Israel. Why? Because both trees are olive trees. One of them is called what kind of olive tree? One's wild and one's... See, there's that good again. In other words, being plugged into the good olive tree means that you are now the recipient of some good stuff. I love that term. But isn't that true? Israel was the recipient of God's goodness. Not just His goodness. When we get further down in the chapter, you can get another word added to that. So I put it in your notes early. It's His goodness and mercy. Does severity indicate that God is being merciful? No. If you get broken off, are you getting mercy? No. You're not getting goodness and you're not getting mercy. If you're in the tree, you get goodness and mercy because this tree, and again, I'm jumping to the end, this is the tree of God's goodness and mercy. And you say, where do you get that? Out of the passage. And if you say, well, look, it's an olive tree, so it must be Israel. All right, so look, here's the wild olive tree. It's scraggly, it kind of looks like a bramble. And then you got this, this other olive tree, and it's full, and it's got olives all over it and all that. All right, so here's the good one. Here's the wild one. But this is a good what? Olive tree. And this is a wild what? It didn't say it was a pomegranate tree. It said it was a olive tree. Well, wait a minute. If an olive tree means it has to be Israel, then there's no Gentiles in Romans 11. Are you with me? They're both olive trees in this illustration. If the olive tree has to be Israel, then here's what he's saying. He broke Israel off of this tree so he could come over here to this olive tree and take branches off of wild Israel and put it into good Israel so he could later break those branches off and, and put the, the original branches back into the... They're both olive trees. If the olive tree has to be Israel, he's not talking to Gentiles. But verse 13 says... I say to you Gentiles. And then he talks, and then he uses the pronouns. They and thou. They being Israel, and thou, the ones that you, you people I'm talking to, Gentiles. So when someone says to you, well, you get plugged into this tree and it's an olive tree, it, you gotta be, you're, you're now Israel. You were already an olive tree. It didn't change trees. What is the difference between... I'm, okay, I'll calm down. What is the difference between the good olive tree and the wild olive tree? It's not what kind of tree they are. They're both olive trees. What is the difference? One is cared for and one is not. That's it. That's it. And if you get plugged into this tree, you're not being made Israel. You're being made cared for. You're, being, you're now being looked after. You're now being given the root and fatness that this tree has to offer you. And it doesn't matter who you are. You can be an Israelite or you can be a Gentile. If you get plugged into this tree... You get something that you cannot get any other way. Everybody see that? That's the point. Okay, we have to stop here and re redo this. Okay, so just let me know, Anna, when you're ready.